All right, hey Ghost. I'm gonna be testing out some ways to get better handheld shots. You pretty much only need a camera and a tripod, but I'm gonna be using a monopod because this is my tool of choice. It's basically the same thing. I don't think uh, you're gonna be having a difference. So the first method, we'll just do using two hands for handheld. Very simple. It's probably gonna be very shaky. The second method, we're gonna be using handheld with the viewfinder so we have three points of contact pushing against our eye. Next we have using the monopod two hands and putting the handle on our shoulder just for three points of contact. And then finally we have the monopod crane which we're using two hands but also putting it between our armpits or touching our waist for three points of contact. So the first test we're going to be using a heavy lens. The Zeiss Otis 28mm f1.4, which is 1.3 kilograms. We're going to be walking pretty slow, and Ibis is off. Ibis is off for all of these tests. If you notice, I'm walking on some pretty smooth pavement for all of these, just so it's a control experiment. You know, of course, I included the handheld uh, with two hands just to give it a little control. And the reason why I use a monopod is because uh, I found that it was a little bit similar to the glide cam system. So I thought, why not just, you know, instead of using a dedicated glide cam, why not just use the monopod? This is test two. Now we're using a small lens, but everything else is the same. We're still walking slow. I'm using the 23 millimeter F1.4 linear motor. Now I think handheld looks pretty bad here. Um, in this situation, with handheld with a viewfinder, I thought it was pretty, pretty decent. And of course, we have the monopod again. And this is what I'm talking about. I think it looks quite smooth. And the monopod crane, I think for some situations, also looks quite nice. Uh, this one sort of wobbles on the sort of the Z axis a little bit, but I think it's still very good. And then finally, the test number three. Now we're gonna do normal walking speed, so it's much quicker. You know, I'm not trying to do some heel toe. You know, uh, I am still bending my knees and tucking in my elbows, but you know, I'm just trying to walk normal, as if you know you're trying to catch up with someone. Uh, as you can see here, the monopod. I think it looks really, really nice. Of course, there's still some bumps, but you know, I'm not adding any stabilization. I think even after you add a little bit of stabilization, I think it's really acceptable. And then monopod crane, I think, is also not bad. So the main reason why I made this video is because I think some other people are like me and they don't like to use gimbals. And I think one reason why people use gimbals is because it looks really professional. It almost has this corporate feel if you're doing advertisement. I would want to have a stabilized footage, you know, with a gimbal or, you know, another type of rig. But when I'm shooting, I typically shoot handheld and I find that very enjoyable. Now, stabilized footage, there are many reasons to do that. One is that it has better focus on the scene. If you shoot handheld, it can be really distracting as, you know, camera movement already is kind of distracting. You're looking all over the scene. But with stabilized footage, it allows you to have more focus. So that might be really important if you don't want to your audience to be distracted on something. I also find that it's a little bit more sleek and even maybe more cinematic. And one of the reasons I think is because stabilized footage, you can sort of focus more on the background a little bit more because it's you know still or more smooth. So you can you know appreciate the background of the cinematography better. Typically, you would use handheld footage for fight scenes. That's like you know very common just to make the fight scene seem a little bit more visceral, right? But in some films like John Wick, they made the fight scenes with stabilized footage so it looked really and it felt really sleek, right? That's not saying it's better, but it's different. And I think it feels more sleek in that situation. There are many other cinematographers that use stabilized footage like uh, Roger Deakins and uh, David Fincher. David Fincher is, uh, will shoot the same scene many, many times. He has a really precise movements of the camera, you know? Everything is deliberate in how he frames the shot 
and he wants to transition to those shots as smoothly as possible. So you can get perfect framing with more stabilized footage, right? And there's only one negative I think is that, you know, with too many stabilized shots, I think sometimes, especially on YouTube, you'll see this, you know, perfectly uh, stable shots. I think it lacks a little bit of a character. It feels almost like dull perfection. And what I mean by that is it just has this kind of distant feel, like not robot robotic, but a little bit inhuman, you know, even in some horror films, you know. I think stabilized shots really benefit horror films because it does have a slightly more eerie feeling because, you know, typically things in our world don't hover or don't are not as smooth as you might as a, you know, a gimbal shot, for example. So why might you want to use handheld footage? So I think we often associate handheld footage with war films, with documentaries and vlogs, and it does have that sort of that natural feel. And generally, most people don't like handheld footage. And some people might even consider it unwatchable depending how jittery the footage is. But I think shaky, shaky footage can make an ordinary scene a lot more impressive than it really is. You know, that's, I, think that's, I think that's one reason why fight scenes often use handheld footage. It seems more intense, more chaotic, right? Um, I also find it a little bit more realistic and adds a little bit more intimacy to a scene. And one example of that is uh, The Blair Witch Project. That's a very famous movie, shot handheld, and it has that almost like that documentary kind of tone. It feels like, you know, as if you're actually there. And I think another thing about handheld footage is that it's, it feels a little bit unpredictable. You don't know really what's going to happen. Things aren't really choreographed. Um, you know, typically with stabilized footage, every movement, camera movement is deliberate. So that gives you some hints or cues, but with handheld, it's not as obvious if the you know the director wants you to see something or you know it's about to turn a corner and something's gonna happen. So uh, you know there are many famous cinematographers that shoot handheld. Uh, I think the most well-known one is Emmanuel Lubetsky, right? And um, I think there's a quote that one of these directors said, and I tend to agree with, which is that handheld footage brings us closer in the search for truth. Now, of course, these are all general rules, so uh, it's not always the case, but I think it's worth thinking about because you can sort of change the rules or break the rules, and although they, they have these general effects, you know, it's important to have them in the back of your mind.